In this lesson, we're going to cover how to create and reuse eye features. Think of an eye feature as a block that will be placed inside of a library that we can go back and reuse to help us create other parts. The file that we're going to use for this exercise is called iFeatureParent.ipt and it can be found in your Chapter 9 exercise folder. I'm going to start off by making Sketch 2 active. As you can see in this file, I have already drawn in some geometry and applied a constraint making all of the edges equal. So also what I'm going to do at this point is I want to go ahead and delete all of the edges that were automatically projected when I made that top plane active. And the reason I want to do that is I don't want those edges to be extracted when I create the eye feature, being that those edges will not be utilized in the placing of that cross. So what I'm going to do next is I want to go back and place in a dimension for this top edge and let's place it in at five millimeters. And what would be really good to do is start to utilize parameters. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to click on parameters and for our five millimeter dimension I'm going to change its name to thickness and then I'm going to add a user parameter and let's place it in as depth and we'll change its equation to 2. And that's all I want to do at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Done. And now let's click on Return. I'm going to exit out of the sketch. And let's go ahead and extrude out the cross. In this case, you could also do a join or a cut when creating an eye feature. For our example here, we're going to go back and do a cut. And what I like to do is I'm going to reuse the parameter that we just created called depth. Click OK. And now we're done creating our feature that I want to reuse. As you see, it's, it's definitely there. What I like to do now is click under the Tools pull down. And I'm going to click on Extract Eye Feature. I need to tell Inventor which feature we're going to create this from. So from the browser, I'm going to click on Extrusion 2 and you'll see that the parameters were automatically added to the size parameters area. If you needed to, you could also go back and add other parameters just by selecting their name and then bringing them across by selecting the two right facing arrows. What you can do now is you can go back and you can modify the prompts. What you want to do is you want to make sure that you have the prompts that a user will go back and identify with. So in this case, I'm going to keep all the defaults but the next thing I want to do is I want to set up a limit. For the depth, right now it's set at none. So I'm going to select in there and I'm going to change this back to a range. So in this case, I'm going to go back and say I want it to be less than or equal to. And I'm going to keep it at two millimeters for the low side. And then for the high side, I'm going to change that to eight millimeters. Click OK. And then for the thickness, what we can do is I'm going to change this to a list. So in this example, let's say that we're going to be tooled up in two millimeter increments here. So I'm just going to go back and add a couple. Let's place one in at seven and I'll place in another one at nine. Go ahead, click OK as five millimeters will be our default. So now that I have my eye feature created here, I'm going to go ahead and click save. Now we're going to go ahead, we're going to write this out to the catalog information here. So I could go back and specify which category I want that to go in. So in this case, I have one in here called cross. And let's go back and overwrite that. So I'm going to replace that. Telling me that it's outside the project and that's okay. So now at this point, what I would suggest is go ahead and save your file. So just in case you needed to go back and create another eye feature from this, you would still have your original geometry to do that. What we're going to do next is I'm going to reuse that eye feature. So I'm going to start up a new part file. And we'll just draw on a rectangle. And I'm going to apply a couple dimensions to it. Let's make it 60 by 50. Switch to an isometric view. We'll go ahead and we'll extrude that. So what we'll do next is we'll go back and place that eye feature into our part here. 
So from the Part Features panel, I'm going to click on Insert Eye Feature. And then I'm going to click on the Browse button. And we're going to go back out. And make sure that you're going to go back and find the correct location. So you may have saved this off to a server location. So you want to make sure that you're going to select the correct one. The default, you can see here, it's going to go into Program Files, Autodesk, the Inventor version that you're using, and then the Catalog. In this case, this is where I placed it. So now I'm just going to click on the cross.ide, click open. Now as I move my cursor, you'll see that it's being placed on the planes. So in this case, I'm just going to put it right in the middle. Now from the eye feature dialog box, what I'm going to do is that we can go back and specify the angle. If I want it to go in at a specific angle, I'm going to click next and you'll see these are where our prompts are. So for the depth, in this case, let's go back and type in one. You'll see that the value goes to red, so if I click outside there, Inventor is going to give me a warning and telling me that it needs to be within 2 and 8 millimeters. So let's go ahead and place it in at 3. Now for the thickness, if I click on that, from my list, you'll see that I have my 5, 7, and 9 millimeters, so let's place it in at 7 millimeters. Click Next. What I can do now is I can activate the sketch and go back and define where it is, or in this case, we'll just say no, see what it looks like. So if I spin the model around here, I have now placed in that eye feature. And you'll notice now in the browser, I have an entry for that eye feature. So if I expand that, you'll see that I have the sketch. So I can make that sketch active. Now with that sketch active, we can go back and place in dimensions to go back and locate this if needed. You can also edit that feature. So if I right click and edit eye feature, we can go back and change its values just like you would expect. So in this case, let's go back and place that in at five millimeters. And from our list, let's change that to nine. Click next and finish. And our eye feature has been updated. So once that eye feature has been placed into our library, we can go back and make edits to it. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and open up the I feature. So I'm going to navigate out. So in this case, again, it's going to be under the C. And then we're looking for program files under Autodesk. It'll be under your inventor version, in this case, 2008. And now we're looking for the catalog. And right here, you'll notice I have my cross.ide. Click on Open. And in our browser, you'll see that it's listing off the base. If I scroll back here a little bit, it's a representation of the information, in this, in this case, just a cube. And then we have our eye feature. So if I zoom back up on that, from the panel, we can edit that eye feature. And it'll bring back the dialog box that was used to create that. Or we can go back and view the catalog if you want to go back and see other features that may be available as shown here. In this case, I'm going to close that. And lastly, let's click on the iFeature author table. You can see the dialog box looks a little bit different, but we can go back and you can insert another row if you want and go back and add some other values. So in this case, if I want to place another one in at 11, I could go ahead and do that. So now I'll save the updated eye feature.